Okay, so you guys are going to listen to me talk a little bit, hopefully. Um, this video reaches some new preppers or survivalists out there. Now, there's going to be some people out there that this is probably going to be one of those videos that I make where people bitch and moan and leave some kind of stupid comment saying that I'm out of my mind and I'm sure there's a lot of people watching this saying this guy's an asshole. I can do everything he's saying not to do. Well, good for you. So I want to talk about self-made surgeons and, and self-proclaimed trauma medics in an SHTF scenario. And I was coming across this topic, popping into my mind while I was working on filling up my new uh, BOV medical kit. I was changing stuff out, changing things out, putting it all in this new bag I got. You know, I'm not going to get into this right now, but that's going to be for another day for another video. Something for you guys to look forward to. Alright? So, anyway, back to the topic at hand. You know, it's very important if you're preparing for some kind of disaster situation, whether it be natural disaster, whether, you know, flood, hurricane, tornado, down to, you know, end of the world as we know it, shit, it's the fan, fucking people going crazy, riots everywhere, explosions, whatever, nuclear, NBC type disaster, whatever the case may be. It's good to have a good med kit and good knowledge to know how to use it, right? Now, there's a lot of people out there that are, that are buying these field surgery kits and they're and they're reading a lot of medical books and that's great I read a lot of books right and I have some some uh, medical training but it's field training how to deal with certain things in the field that by no means makes me qualified to do uh, to do any major or technically any minor surgery on my own I'm not qualified to do it I'm not a surgeon right okay there's too many people out there make the mistake they read this book on how to do it they, of, of uh, you know um, you know, an EMT type handbook, or they don't get, and they never get any real formal training, you know, and they, they, they watch all these videos on YouTube, and they listen to people explain how to do a tracheotomy. I mean, listen, if you think that you're just going to jab a hole in somebody's throat with a knife and shove a pen in there, boom, you're going to save their life, it's not that easy, okay? There's plenty of things that you should not practice without actual practice and knowledge how to do it. You know, minor surgery, uh, tracheotomies, you know, don't, don't sit there because some, some asshole says, okay, well, you know, if you could cut yourself, you know, pour some gunpowder in your wound and cauterize the wound. This is the wound. This is not Rambo 3, all right? You're not going to still, we're, we're not all Sylvester Stallone. We're not going to be fictionally dumping a, uh, you know, a uh, shotgun shell's worth of powder into our wound and lighting it on fire. First of all, smokeless powder is not good for cauterizing wounds anyway. We're back when we used to deal, use it, they use black powder. But that's besides the point. No matter what, nobody should be trying to cauterize a wound if you don't know how to cauterize a wound, you know, or amputations, all this other stuff. Technically, guys, if you're going to be doing something as simple as applying a tourniquet, you should learn how to do it properly. If you use a tourniquet improperly, you could cause some serious, serious damage, if not death, to somebody, okay? You know, to tooth extractions, stuff like that, that you're not going to grab with a pair of pliers and yank your tooth out, okay? There's things you guys need to know. Please, please, I beg all of you to either don't try to do things you're not qualified to do. If you want to take some EMT courses, you know, stuff like that, if you're a trauma surgeon, if you're a trauma nurse, if you're just an, a, a qualified registered nurse or, or a doctor or a surgeon, or you know you're a qualified trained EMT and you know how to do these things this doesn't apply to you okay this applies to the people out there that want to call themselves EMTs in the field now you should be prepared and ready to treat you know major to uh, minor to major injuries that you are capable of treating right you know sprangs fractures breaks uh, deep cuts lacer you know lacerations um, you know th uh, things of things of that things of that nature you know, uh, burns, you know, that type of stuff. That's the type of stuff that you need to know how to treat. Is it good to know how to treat a gunshot wound and stuff like that? Of course it is. All that stuff, of course it is. Uh, one thing I want to add is I hear a lot of people talking about sticking tampons for gunshot wounds. My personal opinion is that's not a good idea because as a tampon sucks in fluid, it tends to get bigger and then you can do a lot of damage removing that tampon from the gunshot wound after the fact. 
Um, so it's best to, you know, probably leave that to professional if you can. But you got to do what you got to do in your mind, I guess, to, uh, you know, survive. But I wouldn't recommend that. Um, anyway, uh, for instance, something else I want to talk about suturing, right? Sitting at home, watching a YouTube video, practicing stick and stitching up a chicken, a chicken thigh or a chicken breast in your kitchen. Do not make you qualify to suture a wound, to stitch up a wound, okay? Let's make that clear. Get yourself some self-adhesive sutures. Learn how to do that properly. Use those. You don't know how to, you've never been properly trained how to suture up a wound. Don't do it. It's that simple. You could really hurt somebody or cause an infection. The last thing you want is an infection to go septic. That's going to cause a problem for somebody, right? So you got to be careful. You, can, you don't stitch up a wound right. You can get bacteria growth, all kinds of nasties in there and cause a big problem. So basically all I'm trying to say is stick away, stay clear of the things you don't know how to do. If you do want to learn how to do them, take an EMT course, take, you know, go to med school. If you can't go to med school, right, you're not there. Most people can't afford that, but you can afford, most people can somehow save up the money, take an EMT course, you know, take, learn the training to use these type of skills. And please, 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 if you're trying to form your own prepper group, please be smart and keep the people that, that that don't know what they're doing out of your group, okay? Because somebody says, hey, listen, I got all this medical training, does not make it fucking so. So make sure you know these pretty people well and know what they're capable and not capable of doing before you bring them in and you trust your lives in their hands in a situation. All right? Last but not least, know everything that's in your pack, in, in your medical pack. Know how to use everything. All the gear in the world, I've said this, it doesn't matter whether it's hunting, whether it's cooking whether it's tools it does medical gear it doesn't matter all the gear in the world does you no fucking good if you don't know how to use it sorry i'm cursing a little bit but i was just you know i'm losing my voice today i'm in a bad mood so i'm trying to just uh, get through this video quick all right does you no good if you don't know how to use it you know for instance um, there's a lot of quick stop powders out there sea uh, locks blood stop i think it's walmart sells something called blood stop uh, the sea locks or cell locks, however you pronounce it. Um, there's quick clot and there's quick clot bandages and cell locks bandages and all these other stuff. Um, stuff works great, but always remember that kind of stuff is not 100%. I have seen that type of stuff fail. It can fail. It has failed. Um, it doesn't work for everybody. Also, want to keep in mind, know how to use those products. Know how to pack it in the wound. Keep in mind, a lot of these products have to be irrigated out after the fact they're not something you can just put in and leave forever so make sure you know how to irrigate it out and or be plan be plan to take a person to qualify professional after you use that in an emergency to get it irrigated out and have the you know the injury taken care of professionally if possible all right so that's the bottom line please be smart um if you're going to be you know interviewing or or you know, trying to get some people with medical skills in your group, that's great, but please make sure they know what they're talking about, what they're doing. Don't trust that they're, some, that they're YouTube doctors, you know, they're YouTube surgeons. You know, people who are running around, I see it all the time, with, uh, you know, scalpels and forceps and all this other stuff in there and, and, and uh, my, you know, minor surgery kits and, and, and um, needles and threads and, you know, suturing kits and all this other crap, and then it scares me because they have, oh, well, i seen on YouTube, and I read a couple pamphlets on how to, you know, how to stitch in an emergency. Please don't do something you don't know how to do. And please pass this message along to your kids, grandkids, aunts, uncles, brothers, sisters, mothers, anybody who's trying to get into this prep and stuff, and please wean out the bad apples out of your group. Don't trust those people, man. It's not going to be not work out good for you in the end. A, they're not going to help you. They can be of no use to you. And B, they could definitely hurt you or, and or kill you by their lack of knowledge and attempting to do something they're not qualified to do. All right. Um, I think that's where I'm going to leave this at today. This is, um, I'm going to be doing a video on what's inside this bag on the, um, within the coming week or so. Anyway, that's it, everybody. Have a great day. I apologize for a little bit of profanity. Um, you know, as I always say, stay in the fight for our Second Amendment, guys. we got a major uphill battle going on. And, uh, you know, don't give in. Don't back down. United States of America, the greatest country in the world. Let's keep it that way. All right, everybody. God bless. Stay safe. Stay strong. I'll see you in the next one.